What's up guys? Welcome back. Today we are doing another product empties videos. I actually haven't done one of these videos in a, like a year now, I think. So it's been a long time. I have this entire box full of empty products. I'm going to be going through those and then telling you guys what I will be repurchasing and then what I won't be repurchasing. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video and I am in the middle of filming a Morphe foundation review right now. So stay tuned for that video that will be up next to my channel. So if you guys want to know all the products that I have used up, then just keep on watching. I'll just start off with these because there's so many of them, but these are some of my Halo Beauty Hair, Skin, and Nails boosters. I've probably gone through like eight of these bottles. I absolutely love these vitamins. I ran out of them a few months ago and I went about a month without taking them. Within a week of me taking them again, I noticed a huge difference in the hydration of my skin. The main reason why I like them so much because my skin is very oily, but it also is dehydrated. I can just tell a huge difference in the hydration of my skin and I absolutely love it. So I, of course, will be continuing to purchase these. This is the Sephora Micellar Water and I actually did not like this. I I ended up just going through the whole thing because it was just laying around my house and I needed to use it up. I just hate throwing things away and giving them away if I don't like them. So I just used it to spot clean my brushes and it worked okay for that. I didn't like though because it really irritated my eyes. It irritated my skin. I had all these types of weird little bumps all over my face after I was using it for a little bit. I don't know, I just really did not like this, so I will not be repurchasing this. The micellar water that I absolutely love is this. This is the Simple Micellar Water for sens Sensitive Skin. It's so gentle on my skin, it doesn't leave any type of film on it. Even after I wash my face and I think I've gotten all the makeup off, I will run over my face with a cotton pad with this on it and it just takes off any extra dirt or makeup that's left in my pores. It doesn't dry out my skin and it's just amazing, so I absolutely love this. I have some makeup wipe packs that I've gone through and I'll just start with this one. This is the Simple Sensitive Skin Experts Cleansing Facial Wipes. I really liked this one. I have another one of the Simple ones. Okay, so this one is just a cleansing facial wipe and then this one is the Micellar Wipe. <laughs> So it's kind of like the same thing as a micellar water, except it's in a white form. I really liked both of these. Again, there was no film left on my skin. It doesn't irritate my skin. It doesn't irritate my eyes or anything like that. So I did really like these, but I don't know if I will be repurchasing them again, just because I found wipes that I like better than these. This is the Equate brand makeup wipes, and I did not like these. It irritated my skin, it made it itchy, but I do like to buy just really cheap makeup wipes that I don't really care about to wipe off makeup on my hands, my arms, when I'm doing swatches and stuff like that. So it is nice to have stuff around that I don't care about to use on other things, but other than that, I wouldn't use these on my face again. And then I have one of these. I actually have a whole box of like 40 of these. You can buy these at Costco. These are the Kirkland brand daily facial towelettes. They are very gentle, super soft. They're really, really wet. So I really like these. They do a really good job of removing all my makeup. This is the Kat Von D Contour Shade and Light Palette, and this has seen better days. Of course, I'm not completely out of it, but I mean, I there's really no use for it. I'm completely out of the middle shade, which is what I use most. I just really love this contour palette. It's not patchy at all. It blends really easily and the shades are just perfect for my skin tone. I feel like the undertones of them aren't too warm. They're not too ashy. So I really love this and I will definitely be repurchasing this again. And then we have this highlighter from Jouer. This is the Citrine highlighter and... Ugh, this is probably like the second highlighter I've ever gone through in my life. I love this so much. I actually already bought another one and I'm already hitting pan on that one. It is just the perfect blinding highlight for my skin tone and I can wear it when I'm really fair and when I'm self tanned. It doesn't enhance my texture and it's just super buttery and creamy. I'm sure I will always repurchase this one. I just, I love it way too much. And then we have the H2O Plus Beauty Oasis Hydrating Ultra Hydrating Cream. I did really like this but it wasn't like anything crazy to me. I mean, it did the job. It was a moisturizer. It didn't break me out and it didn't really irritate my skin or anything like that. So it is a good moisturizer. And it also wasn't the best for underneath your makeup. So if I would put it on and then do a full face of makeup, it didn't really react well to my foundations. So it was more just like a nighttime moisturizer. So I don't know, I, I probably won't repurchase this one. I just filmed for the last 30, 40 minutes and my microphone was dead. So this is the Drunk Elephant Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil. I love this stuff. I used to use the Josie Moran Argan Oil and I noticed that one was kind of clogging my pores and I was getting all these little bumps over my cheeks, which usually doesn't happen unless something is irritating my skin. So I stopped using that. I switched over to this one and this one is much more lightweight, but it still gives me a lot more hydration. What I like to do with this is put this like two or three pumps in 
into my moisturizer on my hand, rub it together and then put it on. And it just gives me so much extra hydration. So I love this stuff. It is pricey, but I will definitely be buying this one again. I have one foundation that I've gone through, which is very rare for me, but this is the Revlon Full Cover Color Stay Foundation. I have the shade at 200 in this and I love this foundation so much. It is a pretty small tube, but I use this almost every time I do my makeup, and if I'm not using it, I will mix it in with something else. It just has such a nice consistency. It's more whipped and a little bit thicker. It's kind of like the same consistency as the Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation, but I love this stuff because I never get oily in it. It never breaks up, separates. It doesn't look cakey on my skin. It just looks very, very soft, and that's my favorite thing about it. It's just how soft it makes my skin look, so definitely one of my favorite foundations. I will obviously repurchase this again. We have an empty Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, which you guys know I love, so I will be buying this again as well. This is a Too Faced Peach Perfect Matte Setting Powder and you guys are probably getting sick of me talking about this, but my holy grail for oily skin, it locks down my oils and keeps them at bay for a super long time and it also is very smoothing on the skin. It just looks so soft and airbrushed and I love the smell of it. It gets my mouth sometimes and I love the taste. It literally tastes like peaches and it's super, super finely milled and it just makes my face look really soft, so I love this stuff. And then I have two more setting powders that I've gone through. These are the Laura Mercier setting powders and I definitely don't like these as much as the Too Faced ones but I do still like them. I feel like this setting powder is kind of a staple for all skin types. It does a pretty good job of controlling my oils but definitely not as much as the other one that I just showed you. This is still a really great setting powder so I will be buying this again. And then I have a mask here. This is the Glam Glow Super Mud Clearing Treatment. I think this is actually the very first mask I've ever gone through. And it takes me a long time to go through masks just because I have so many of them and I'm constantly like rotating them in and out. But this is definitely my holy grail mask for acne. If you have really dry skin though, I probably wouldn't recommend this because it definitely does dry out my skin a little bit. I just love it because it completely clears out my pores. It gets all the gunk out of there. It's really good for spot treating. So if I have a little breakout, I'll just put like a dot over them and then sleep with it overnight. And it does a super good job of drying those out and clearing them up really fast. Otherwise, if I do do a full face of this mask, I usually would only do it like once a week just because it is kind of drying. But other than that, I love this stuff. This is the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. And again, love, love, love this stuff. I've gone through probably three tubs of these in the last few months. In my opinion, this is the best makeup remover that I've ever tried at least. It kind of feels like coconut oil and you just take a glob, rub it around your face and it just dissolves all the makeup on your skin. It dissolves your eye makeup and it's just very easy to use and I feel like that takes my makeup off the most out of anything else that I use, even my face wash. It's just super easy so I will definitely be buying it this one again as well. We have some mascaras here. These are the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascaras. I think mascaras and brow products are what I go through the most just because that's what I'm always wearing even if I'm doing like a no makeup look day. But this is my favorite mascara. It makes my lashes look super thick and also long. I love the brush that it's on. It never flakes on me. It doesn't transfer below or on top of my lids and I just love this stuff so I will always repurchase this. I also have this L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black Mascara. I actually bought this just to use underneath my false lashes just because I don't really like using my favorite mascaras underneath my lashes just because it's kind of a waste if you're just putting lashes on anyways. It does look nice though if you do wear it alone. It just definitely doesn't make my lashes as long and thick as that other one I just showed you. So we'll see, but I probably won't be repurchasing this one. And then I have this L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. I actually just bought this one for my lower lashes because the wand is so, it's just teeny tiny. So I thought it would work really well for my lower lashes and it does work really well for them. But I actually found another mascara that I like better for my lower lashes. And I do have one up here. This one isn't empty, but I have gone through tons of these. This is the Sephora Outrageous Curl Mascara. And this is what the wand looks like on this one. So it just fits really nicely on the bottom lashes. It also takes me forever to go through these just because I'm only using it down here. We have some brow pencils here. These are all the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wizzes and then the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencils. I like them both equally, but they are a little bit different. The Benefit one has a little bit more of a tug to it. This one I also feel like lasts a little bit longer on my skin. It is waterproof, so it definitely has something to do with it. And then the Anastasia one glides on a lot easier when you're applying it. It doesn't last as long and I don't think this one is waterproof. That's why it is a little bit like smoother to apply, I guess you could say. But either way, I love these so I will of course be buying them again. This is the Fresh Soy Face Cleanser and I actually stopped using this a few months ago but I still really love this. It's one of the only face washes that doesn't break me out and irritate my skin. It just feels very gentle. I love the smell of it. It kind of smells like cucumbers. I don't know, I haven't used this one in a while 
while, but I do know that I love this, so I will be buying it again. I have two of my Marc Jacobs Highliner Gel Crayons. I have the shades Blacker in these. They are super black on my waterline. I'm actually not wearing them today for once. I'm using the new... I don't have it up here, but it's the Milk Eyeliner. This is definitely the blackest and longest lasting liner that I've used on my waterline, so I will definitely be repurchasing these ones. Another eyeliner I have is the Tarte Sex Kitten Liner. I did not think I was gonna like this, but I actually really like this, so I will be buying this one again. This is a felt tip liquid liner. I usually do not like felt tips, but for some reason, this one is just perfect. I love it. I love the tip on it. I can get a really nice wing with it. I always use my Inglot gel liner to do a winged liner, but if I'm in a rush and I don't have time to take out my brush and do all that, I will just use a liquid or a felt tip liner, and this one works really, really good. It's super black, dries down to a pretty matte black finish. So I will be buying this one again. It's just so easy to use. This is the MAC Studio Fix Powder at the shade NC25. I don't think I'll ever not like Studio Fix Powder. It's just so easy to use when you just need something quick to even out your skin tone. I really like powders when I'm in a rush and I'm not doing any foundation or anything, so what I use this for is I will just take a big, huge, fluffy brush like this and I'll just quickly pounce it around my whole face and it has so much coverage for being a powder. I will repurchase this one, but it probably won't be for a while just because I have so many other powders to go through. This is the Sigma Sig Magic Brush Shampoo Foam. I did really like this, but I don't think I'll be repurchasing it just because I am washing my brushes differently now. If I just need to clean my brushes really quickly, I will use my Clinique Brush Cleaner, I think it's just called. It's the pink stuff in the bottle that I showed a while back. And then when I do wash my brushes in the sink, I've just been using a bar of soap mainly just because it gets expensive buying so many brush shampoos and brush soaps and everything because I go through them so fast so I don't know I feel like I'll just stick to the bar soap for now we have some dry shampoos I'm surprised I only have two in this bin because I go through dry shampoo like crazy I only wash my hair once a week so I go through a ton of dry shampoos I will say I didn't like this one I feel like it left my hair with a really light film. Basically every dry shampoo is gonna do that. I also feel like it didn't absorb my oil as well, so I probably won't be buying this one again. This is a blonde one though, my hair is not really blonde anymore, especially at my roots, so I won't be buying this shade again, but I do really like the original dry shampoo of this one. So I will be buying this brand again, just not this shade until I have my blonde hair back. It has been eight months since I've dyed my hair, I can't believe it, but I just decided to give my hair a break. I'm so over it not growing. I hardly ever straighten it or curl it anymore. That's why my hair is just always looking like a mess, but if you're ever wondering why my hair looks frizzy and there's no like particular wave to it, that's why. I have a shampoo here. This is from Joyco, and this is the Color Balance Purple Shampoo. I used this when my hair was a lot blonder. Didn't really like it though. I mean, it, it's supposed to be a purple shampoo that tones out your hair and makes it more blonde instead of like brassy. And I just feel like it didn't really work for me and it also does have sulfates in it which I didn't know when I bought this. I don't like using any sulfates in my hair, so I won't be buying this again. Speaking of, if you guys have any recommendations for purple shampoo that isn't gonna completely damage my hair, I would love to take your suggestions. And then we have this Living Proof Restore Mask Treatment. I love this mask. It makes my hair feel so, so soft. I just feel like it works really good to make my hair kind of restore and feel soft and smooth again. I've been out of this for a minute though, and I only have one other hair mask. I need to get more, so my hair has been struggling for a little bit now. And then I have two of the It's a 10 Miracle Leave-In Plus Keratin Sprays. I, to be honest, I mean, I keep buying this and I probably will keep buying this, but I don't really know if it's doing anything for my hair. I really just use it kind of as a detangler because usually when I get out of the shower, my hair is pretty tangly. So I will just do a couple of squirts in my hair and then it brushes out super nicely. So I do really like using it for that. I mean, it definitely does make my hair really soft and I notice a difference when I don't use it, but I don't know if it's making a difference in my overall hair since I have been using this for like a year now. Again, I'm open to your recommendations on anything hair-wise because that is one thing that I know nothing about. <laughs> and I have one last thing, and this is the Dr. Jart Water Fuse Gel. I love this stuff. I actually haven't used it since the summertime. I ran out of it and I just didn't buy it again. But I really like this stuff. It's super lightweight and absorbs into the skin really easily. It works really well under foundations. So if I use this in the morning and then I quickly do a full face of makeup, it doesn't separate or just kind of react to the moisturizer. It's also very, very hydrating. It doesn't clog my pores and yeah. I 
really like this, so I probably will buy this again in the summertime. I just don't really, I don't know, in the winter, I like to use a little bit heavier of a moisturizer just because my skin does get a little bit drier. I'm sure I will buy this again in the summer. All right, guys, that is it. I cannot believe how long that took me from my microphone dying filming an extra like 45 minutes and it just all this mess. So it has definitely been a rough filming day for me. I actually was planning on doing a Sephora haul and then this empties videos. And I decided while I was getting ready that I should just do a foundation review since I was getting ready anyways. And the foundation review kind of threw my whole day off. So yeah, stay tuned for that foundation review. It'll be up in a couple days after I post this video. It's the Morphe foundation review. So now I'm gonna go finish filming that review. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.